Hello again, it's Miss Joseph still here at this lake in Allegan. I decided to just go ahead and stay here and whip out another chapter for you because it's actually a really short one. So this is chapter 10. There is a little sneak peek. This is the white giraffe by Lauren St. John. And there's that beautiful view and I will get to reading. Back in her room, Martine fell into an exhausted sleep. When her alarm woke her at six, she forced herself to spring out of bed, pull on her wet, muddy jeans, and rush out into the early morning sunlight, pausing only to splash icy water on her face. She knew she had to find an excuse for the state of her clothes. By the time her grandmother emerged to feed Shaka at 6.30, Martine was on her knees in the vegetable garden, weeding furiously. Gwen Thomas could hardly believe her eyes. Whatever are you doing, child? She asked. You're absolutely filthy. I'm just trying to clear the woods away from these carrots, or the weeds away from these carrots, Martine said brightly. I've been doing some thinking, and I've realized that I need to start helping you a bit more around the house. Well, said her grandmother. Well, I... Well, thank you, Martine. Neither of them mentioned the fight of the evening before. However, Gwen Thomas, who generally served up an unchanging breakfast of boil, boiled eggs and toast, made Martine a special treat of fresh papaya and mango, a South African porridge called jungle oats, and homemade bread with Cape root gooseberry jam. Martine was just savoring the last incredible bite when Alex Dupree's gray Land Rover came roaring up the drive. Martine scowled. She only met the game warden once, but she disliked him on sight. He was what her mom would have described as a snake oil salesman, overfamiliar and full of insincere patter. Oh, sorry, I looked down for a second and I got blinded. Sorry, I looked up, I should say, for a second and I got blinded by the sun. It is gorgeous, but now I can't see. Whew. Okay, there we go. He gave her the creeps. She couldn't believe he had any empathy with animals. His freckled face, topped by a shock of strawberry blonde hair, appeared at the front door. Good morning, Mrs. Thomas. Martine, he said breezily. How are you ladies on this beautiful day? Very well, thank you, Alex, said her grandmother, smiling. What brings you here so early? Ma'am, I'm just heading into Storm Crossing to buy some zebra feed. I know you've got a lot to do, so... I thought it might be helpful helpful if I gave Martina a lift to school today. Why, Alex, it most certainly would. I've got the vet arriving first thing to check on Shaka and the two buffaloes who had that awful fight yesterday, and a party of 24 Swedish businessmen coming at 10. I really do appreciate your thoughtfulness. Wait a moment while I get her packed lunch. Martine's heart sank. She trailed out of the door after Alex's stocky frame. Once on the road, Alex started up a stream of boring chatter in his thick South African accent. I can't do that accent. Sorry, guys. You just get my voice. <laughs> Martine, who wanted nothing more than to lose herself in a dreamy reverie about her encounter with the white giraffe the previous night, he'd followed her and rested his satiny head on her shoulder, gave him a series of one-word answers, but it didn't seem to discourage him. You're a smart little thing, aren't you? He said as they stopped at the single traffic light in Storm Crossing. I bet you're much better than I was at schoolwork. I'm 11, Martine said rudely. Don't talk to me like I'm a five-year-old. A sly look came across Alex's face. Okay, he said. If that's the way you want to play it. You haven't by any chance come across a white giraffe at Saobona, have you, Martine? Martine did her best to keep the shock from showing on her face. The white giraffe doesn't exist, she answered. Everybody knows that. Alex put his hand in his pocket and took out Martine's precious flashlight. He threw it on the cracked leather seat beside her. She itched to pick it up, but didn't dare. Alex gave a cruel laugh. <laughs> Be like that, then. He put the flashlight back in his pocket. The thing is, Martine, the white giraffe, if it did exist would be very, very valuable. Your grandmother, for instance, would really benefit from the sale of such an animal. 
I mean, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars here, not chicken feed. Now, I would hate to think that you would jeopardize the future of everyone at Salabona by poking around in things that are none of your business. How do you think your grandmother would feel about that? Martine was livid. How dare he talk about Jemmy as if he were just another animal to be hunted down and turned into money. She was pretty sure her grandmother didn't know about his ideas either. And how do you think my grandmother would feel if she knew about your little secret? She retaliated, just to test him. Alex's blue eyes blazed. He pulled into the school, slammed on the brakes, and reached across her to open the door. My girl, he said, you are playing with fire now. He smiled grimly. And you know what happens to people who play with fire. Martine tried to be strong until she was out of the jeep, but... As soon as she turned away from him, the tears began to pour down her face. His laughter followed her all the way across the schoolyard. Whew! That was a short but very crazy chapter. My goodness. All right, here is a sneak peek at chapter 11. And I will read that at some point here in the next few days. I hope that you guys enjoyed chapter 10, but my goodness, that was, that was intense. Whew. All right. Have a, have a very great night, everybody. Um, I can't wait to read with you guys again. Bye.